Hello YouTube friends. This is Richard Maybe with Richard Maybe Presents. I've got an exciting show planned for today. I mean put it in fifth gear excitement. Uh, having I since I did the this show about two years before the mast, I read this comic book again and I had read it about a month ago, but I read it again. And I am going to go to the library and get the book. For real. <laughs> no, for real. I'm going to get the book and read the book. But keeping upon this theme, uh, it's funny, the last two nights I dreamt that I was on a clipper ship. <laughs> and not, not, not that that was a, uh, an officer or um, a guest or regalia, or uh, I was, uh, you know, seaman, sailor. So um, it's just opening up a whole new vista that I hadn't thought about in a long time. The bird just flew by. <laughs> it just went whoop in the background. <laughs> oh, so anyway, this is the clipper ship, model of a clipper ship that um so I get, there it is uh, i bought this for my dad for christmas of 1971 i was in my freshman no 1967 1967 I was in my freshman year uh of high school and i bought this let's see if i can get it it's a great clipper ship they call it the what do they call it the the albatross I have to look this research this on the internet, the albatross. And then <laughs> I dug all this. Well, this I had on my bookshelf. Um, I got these from Ocean Grove, New Jersey. Uh, a little shop, a little gift shop down there. Uh, the, that, that, the ship, the clipper ship is over 50 years old. Uh, but I got these... Oh my goodness, around 1991, I was working at uh, the phone company and uh, a, a, a buddy of mine, we used to go down to Ocean Grove all the time. Not all the time, but you know, I think we went down a couple of times. <laughs> all the time, we went down a couple of times. And uh, so it was about 91. So 01, 11, 21. So it's about 30 years old. This is... Um, this is like the old man, you know, not necessarily the captain, but like the old man on the ship. There's the captain. I gotta dust these off real good. And uh, this is the, the sailor, the seaman, the man who climbed, hoisted the mast, climbed up the mast, Climbed up to the crow's nest. Of course, the crow's nest was that uh, on the top, the highest mast. Maybe they had one on every mast, and it was just simply a little, a little uh, platform. And this is a the common sailor. I shouldn't say common. The sailor, the seaman. So that you know, that's a nice little collection there. But um. I, I'm I'm really into you know stories of clipper ships. I just uh, I I really am. I, I know I kid around, but I really am going to go to the library and, and get this book. But uh, uh, he's, he's walking his dog, so he stops. And the dog, so the dog. I don't want to be graphic. But the dog does his business. So I go like this. So he gets a little plastic bag out and, start, you know, picks up, you know, the dog, the dog's, the dog waste. <laughs> I, you know, he's like, if I, if I hadn't looked over like that, he probably just would have kept going, you know. Uh, this is uh, Mutiny on the Bounty by Nordhoff and Hall. Oh, there's something really interesting about this comic book in the history of classic illustrated. 
uh, number 100. But here, I, can't, I hope it, it's clear, it's a sticker. And it had been marked 15 cents. I suspect that, you know, it was on the, the, the rack, the spinner rack, at the 7-Eleven or the deli or the sweet shop. And then, you know, came on from on high, that classic illustrated was going up to 25 cents. So they probably, all the uh, sweet shop owners and the deli owners and the little newsstands, they probably sent them these little stickers. <laughs> oh, I got a little, little, little Ope wants to come in. Be right back. Ta-da! Say hi, Opie. Opie, say hello to... Hi, I'm Opie. Your, your fans are missing you, kid. Hi, oh, hi, I'm Opie. Wait, wait, here, just, just, just try to... I don't, don't worry about that golf cart out there. Hi, I'm Opie. I'm a good boy, huh? Have you been a good boy? Have you been a good boy today? Hey, hey, Opie, Opie. Yeah, you have? You been good boy today? Yeah, you have a lot of fans, you know. You know, you have you have a lot of fans. Don't worry about the golf. Well, yeah, stay stay with Pops for a while. Just stay with Pops for just just Ouch, ouch that hurts, that hurts. Here, okay. <laughs> ah, kids today. Where was I? Oh, Mutiny on the Bounty. So here it is here. And I showed you the sticker. Classic Illustrated History. I closed the door now. He's going to want to go in. <laughs> Never a dull moment. So anyway. No, I'm really not kidding. He wants to go in. I'll be right back. We're back. He went. He went in the house. <laughs> then he came back out. Then he went in the house. Oops. And then he came back out. Yeah. yeah. Just be nice and can you just be still like just you know we'll have a little conversation here. Yeah here. Okay. Mutiny on the Bounty. Okay. Nordoff and Hall are the authors. Okay here's the opening page. Now here's something interesting. I, I love like the the history of a specific comic book. See they're trying to, they must have been selling it at a garage sale or yard sale. It's got four dollars on it. I don't know why anyone would write on an old collectible comic book, even in pencil. Oh, stay, stay with Pops for a little while. Okay, so that's the opening page. Great artwork. Dynamite storyline. And uh, first of all, let me go through, and I think there were quite a few page length uh, uh, blocks here. Hey, you're back, huh? Papa's doing a little TV show. Oh, this is beautiful. I love this one. Okay. I love when Classic Illustrated did a full page drawing. You know, it was, I just like that a lot. Oh, hit the jackpot here. Double page. Great, great, great artwork. Fantastic artwork. Okay, you all right? You're a good boy. You're a good boy. Your Pops is doing a little TV show there. Oh, good, okay. Just, you can stay right here. You can stay here. Yeah, you can stay here. Uh, let me see another page. No, don't do that to the table. Don't do that to the table. No, don't do that to the table. Oh, another full page. Great artwork. 
great, I mean, great storylines, artwork. So, okay, good boy, good boy. Oh, let me get the date on this. This is from March of 1966. Are you okay? You go, don't, don't hurt yourself. Don't, what? Okay, you, okay. March of 1966. So, it's over 50 years old. Biographies of Charles Nordhoff and James Norman Hall. I think I'll read them. Why not? <clears throat> I usually have a little piece of paper here or something. To... It's hard for me to keep. I'm getting old. Charles Nordhoff and James Norman Hall. The famous writing team of Nordhoff and Hall began functioning shortly after World War I, during which both were members of the Lafayette Flying Corps, better known as the Escadrille Lafayette. James Norman Hall was born in Colfax, Iowa, on April 22, 1887. He attended public school there and graduated from Grinnell College in 1910. He spent four years in social service work as an agent for the Society for the Prevention of cruelty to children. He wants to go in. Um, I'll be right back. This is going to be fun to, to edit. I always think, oh, I'm going to do uh, a comic book show on the back porch, start to finish, no editing. Now I've got, uh, got about probably an hour's work of an hour's work of worth, an hour's worth of work to do to edit. I'm talking about um, James Norman Hall. Restless and endowed with a vivid imagination, he was forever seeking new fields of experience. In 1914, he went to Europe. World War I broke out in August of that year, and Hall enlisted as a private in the 9th Battalion Royal Fusiliers of Lord Kitchener's Volunteer Army. He served as a machine gunner with that unit during the spring, summer, fall, and early winter between 1915 and 1916. He took part in the Battle of Luz. In time, he became intensely interested in flying. He obtained his release from the British Army and re-enlisted in October of 1916 in the Aviation Division of the French Foreign Legion. Hmm. He became a member of the Escadrille Lafayette and met Charles Nordhoff, another member of the famous Flying Squadron. When the Escadrille Lafayette was incorporated into the United States Air Service, James Norman Hall received the commission of captain. He was shot down behind German lines in May of 1918, and he remained a prisoner until the end of the war. After the war was over, Hall and his friend Nordhoff spent some months in the United States writing the history of the Escadrille Lafayette. When the assignment was completed, they decided to go to Tahiti. There in Tahiti, the two men lived and wrote for many years, their best known work being the Bounty Trilogy consisting of one, Mutiny on the Bounty, two, Men Against the Sea, and three, Pitcairn's Island. I, I never realized it was a trilogy. I just thought it was just one book. It's almost, you always learn something new, new from these classic illustrated comic books. Although Hall's later years were spent in the United States, it was in Tahiti to which he returned to work on his autobiography. Sadly, he died in July of 1951, just two years before I was born. Now, moving on to Charles Nordhoff. Charles Nordhoff was born on February 1st, 1887 in London, England, of American parents. He was brought to the United States of America when he was three years old and spent his boyhood in Pennsylvania, in California, and on his father's ranch in Mexico. 
After attending Stanford University for one year, he transferred to Harvard. Smart guy. He's going to Harvard. He graduated from Harvard in 1909. Like James Norman Hall, Nordhoff was an adventurer. During World War I, he volunteered to serve as an ambulance driver. Ernest Hemingway was an ambulance driver in World War I also. Just little footnotes, you know. Uh, where was I? In, he was an ambulance driver in France and won the Croix de Guerre with star and citation for meritorious service. Like Hall, he became interested in flying and transferred to the Escadrille Lafayette and finally to the United States Air Service. So there's no Air Force, it was Air Service. And I think it was under the jurisdiction of the United States Army. By the end of World War I, he had been commissioned a first lieutenant in the USAS, United States Air Service. In spite of his exciting and dangerous mode of living, Nordhoff was shy and modest, loathing formal society. It was natural, therefore, for him to choose to go to Tahiti with his friend and collaborator, Hall. The work of the talented team of Nordhoff and Hall was abruptly brought to a halt by the death of Charles Nordhoff in April of 1947. So Nordhoff, Charles Nordhoff died before James Hall, footnote. Both Nordhoff and Hall exercised great care in examining and re-examining the basic idea of each of their books before they began to write. It is just that care that has made their novels deeply natural. Their scenes and episodes grow vivid. Their characters live and breathe and has made their literary works immortal. Nice little background, the two of them. Now, that's not all they have in this issue. They have a little story about FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. There you go. Uh, stories of early, early America, uh, an explanation of, of the, the duel. And uh, what else they got? Oh, stories from the world of sports. Knut Rockne. Knut Rockne. So I guess he was a He's a football, football player. There is a little drawing of Canute. Good stuff, these books. Good stuff, these books. I would highly recommend anyone. Go on eBay, go on Macari. Get yourself a good deal on them. Don't worry about first edition. Um, oh, he opened the door. He opened, you coming out? He opened the door by himself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like, you know, clicked in, but it was just like, you know, closed. And he got, he, you know, you know he pushes with his paws and gets the door open. Pretty amazing. Yeah, this is so, uh, this is uh, number 100, Mutiny on the Bounty. Originally it was a 15 cent copy. And they put this little trick to make it 25 cents. I don't know how that affects my value. Uh, pencil mark on the inside. I guess I could get an eraser and very carefully erase that. So, um, that's about it for today. Uh, I, 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 I love going over these classic illustrated comic books and, and, you know, reading about the authors and, you know, it's just, you know, maybe we, maybe we had studied it in, in, in school, but you know, it's like a little refresher, you know, inspire, it inspires me to go to the library and get the, and get the book. Uh, Boy Scout patch of the day.
You're so cute. You're a little buddy. You're a pal. You're, you're my little buddy. Come here. You're my... Oh, I see you're not in a better mood, huh? Yeah, you're in a better mood. See, that's the... See? That's the camera. Yeah, now you're getting it. Yeah. What, you want to go down and sit down? What, you want to run around and stuff? Oh, you're a buddy. You're a pal. Okay, scout patch of the day. Booten District Klondike Derby, 1990. I just like to do, every so often, do patch of the day and that kind of thing. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, oh, I always forget. I forget a lot. Please do hit the like button. It helps me out tremendously with the big wheels at YouTube. And also, if you have not yet subscribed, please do subscribe. That helps me out immensely with the um, big wheels at YouTube. And also hit the bell. It'll give you a reminder when I put on a, a new film, new video, new vlog. So I'll wrap it up. I'm going to formally wrap it up. Oh, thank you everyone for, thank you everyone for the comments and the support. I really appreciate it immensely. So um, stay strong, stay happy, stay healthy. This is Richard Maybe signing off.